Okay, so <laughs> hello everybody. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start this uh, again because I forgot to hit the go live button. So the stream wasn't going live. In fact, uh, let me do that and I'm going to uh, re-record right now as well. Okay, so uh, I'm Willie Mayette from Jazz Edge and welcome to this new approach to improvisation. All right, so let's, let's dig right in now. Uh, improvisation is a mindset, which means that if you hang on to mental garbage, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to improvise at your instrument. All right, so you want to make sure that you understand that when, when, you when it comes to improvisation, it's less about like, okay, what you're playing here and what can you play, your technique or anything like that. It all starts here. There has to be a belief that you can improvise and an understanding that, okay, I gotta fix any mental garbage I might have when it comes to improvisation. Um, do me a favor, make sure uh, you guys let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. Um, so again, I uh, apologize for the uh, stream starting late. I forgot to hit the go live button. So um, now, what is a mindset? A mindset is an established set of attitudes that somebody has, all right? So if you have already established that, oh, I can't improvise, well, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to learn how to improvise. So to be successful at improv, your mindset has to agree that, number one, everyone can improvise, all right? And let's talk just real quickly about, well, what exactly is improvisation? That's improvising, okay? You like? Typically when we think of improvisation, we think of improvisation being more structure of like You know, like something like that where we're playing lines and maybe chords and stuff. You know, we might be improvising over a form, a progression, a standard, the blues, whatever it is. And a lot of times we kind of think about improvisation the wrong way in that we think that Improvisation means that we're creating something brand new on the spot. And that's not really what improvisation is. Improvisation is a culmination of everything that you have learned up to that point. Okay, so improvisation is very much like language. For example, you know, when you're 10 years old, you have a certain vocabulary. So there's a certain vocabulary that you can use to uh, communicate. Right? And you put those words together in real time and you're improvising on your vocabulary. When you're 20 years old, you have a different vocabulary. When you're 40 years old, you have a different vocabulary. So as, as you go and as you progress and as you learn more in your vocabulary, by reading, by whatever, you know, then you can say more, you can communicate more. Well, the same thing with improvisation as well. The more that you learn, the more that you can communicate at the instrument. But improvisation is not like, you know, somehow the heavens open up, a lightning bolt comes down and okay, now I know how to, you know, how to, how to improvise and play. No, it doesn't work like that, all right? It is very much uh, a, uh, a process that you learn over time. And that brings me into the second point in that improvisation can be learned. It's not something that is, uh, that, you know, some people can do it and some people can't do it. And now this is the third part that you really got to understand and you really have to hold on to. You must be realistic when uh, it comes to improvisation. Let me just take a quick uh, boom here. All right, perfect, excellent. Everyone can, uh, can see and hear. All right, awesome. So, when I mean be realistic, I mean that, um, well, you know, take me for instance, okay? Uh, if you are brand new to improvisation, you listen to me improvise and, and say, oh, I want to be able to improvise like that. Okay, well, I've been improvising ever since I was a little kid sitting at the piano. So I'm going to be 48 this year. I've been improvising literally for like 47, 46 years. When I was a little baby just sitting around doing it. Well, that was the beginning start of me improvising, like just kind of playing around and having that spirit of exploring. Well, now when I was like 14, 15, I was really getting into improvisation. So I've been doing this for over 30 years. So if you're just getting started versus somebody with 30 years experience, right? So you gotta remain realistic. And, and the reason I put this in here is because too often students have an unrealistic idea that, oh, well, if I just get Willie's improvisation course, I'm gonna be able to improvise in five minutes. If that's what you're thinking, then you're best not to, <laughs> you're best not to do my course because it is going to take time, it takes some work, 
everybody can do it though. And if you're willing to put in that time, and what do I mean by time? I'm talking just a few months. Within a few months time, you're gonna see a big change in your improvisation, as long as you're practicing, all right? So all of that, you know, most of us realize that, but I just think it's important that I have to say it just to, so we're all on the same page. All right, so the reality is this. When it comes to improvisation, it's less about what you play and more about how you play it. Okay, so again, if I take this, right, I'm just playing random, random stuff, right? Now, you're probably not going to want to listen to that, right? I mean, it just sounds like literally I'm playing random stuff. But now, let's say that I still play random stuff, but I start to create some more structure to it, like... becomes a lot more interesting, doesn't it? Now there's no progression there, it wasn't in a particular key, I'm just kind of making it up as I go, but it sounds a lot more interesting uh, to your ears, likely than if I just play that, right? Uh, and that's because it's less about what I'm playing and more about how I play it, all right? So, Let's talk cooking for a second, right? Because I like food and I like to cook. So let's talk about the elements of a pie. So the first element of a pie is what? The crust. You need a crust for the pie. The second element is ingredients and filling. And the third uh, element is you need a certain amount of time to bake that pie. So you'll see how this all kind of relates to improvisation in a second. But just think, crust, filling, time, okay? So. Just like in cooking, improvisation also has its elements as well, all right? So first element is accompaniment. Now, let's take a look at this, and I'm gonna show you this slide again in a second, but without a strong, consistent, even, and well-performed accompaniment, your improvisation will not have the foundation it needs to be successful. So what does that mean? Well, let me give you an image here. So when building a house, right, you need a solid foundation. And the solid foundation is just like what? Just like the crust of the pie. If you don't have a solid foundation to your house, well, what do you get? You end up getting this, right? It falls down, right? So you have to have that solid foundation when you improvise. And that solid foundation comes from your accompaniment. Now, you might say, well, wait a second, I'm playing solo, or I'm playing with a band, or maybe it's not a full band, maybe I'm playing you know, with a singer, I'm accompanying a singer, or I'm playing with a bass player or a guitar player. It doesn't matter, there's still something that you're probably gonna be doing in the left hand, all right? And you might even say, but wait a second, I do like a synthesizer thing and I just kinda use the pitch bend down here and I don't play any left hand. Well, yeah, okay, uh, that's fine, but there's still some accompaniment going on, right? If you're doing the synthesizer thing, and, like doing that kind of stuff, well, then you're probably playing with a band, and then that band accompaniment has to be well-performed, solid, uh, you know, and consistent. So we're not going to talk about that, though. We're really going to be talking about, for right now, improvising, talking about us doing some kind of accompaniment in the left hand. Because 99% of the time, when you're going to be improvising, you're going to play something down here in the left hand. What are you going to play in the left hand? We're going to go through all of this in the chorus. Don't worry. But to give you some ideas, well, what are some things you can do? You could do a bass line, right? You could do triads or seventh chords, some kind of chord. You could do chord shells. You could do, you know, like a, a more advanced bass line. You could do like oompas, right? There's all different things that you can do in that left hand. Rootless voicings, whatever it is. But the point is this, if you don't know what that left hand accompaniment is, and you don't know how to play it well, then it's gonna be virtually impossible to improvise over the top of that. If we go back to this image here of this house, imagine trying to build that house if the foundation was like still wet or cracking or falling apart. There's no way, right? It just couldn't happen. And if we take our example of the pie as well, imagine that you have a pie, but the crust is falling all apart. Well, 
right? You know what's happening there as well, right? So it's extremely important that the foundation, that the accompaniment is just really solid. What do I mean by really solid? I mean that you know how to play it in time and that you really kind of have that accompaniment uh, memorized to a point and that you have it ingrained in your playing, right? So for instance, if I'm gonna play like a 12 bar blues, right? And And for right now, let's just go between the C7 and F7. So I have a C7 chord to an F7 chord in. Just basic chords, root 3, 7 here, and this is the inversion of the F7 chord. So worry less about the voicing and what am I playing down here, and worry more about how it's nice and steady. If I put on some kind of drum beat here, all right, I'll put this one on for right now. So just a simple little improvisation of it. Not really a 12 bar blues. It's really just going from C to F, right? So now that was all fine, right? So I'm playing some chords and playing some stuff in the right hand. You might love it, you might hate it. Don't worry about that, okay? Uh, that's another thing about when it comes to improvisation. Hey, guess what? There's always time for judging. And don't worry, people like will love to judge your improvisation and all that. That's not what you're worried about. All you're worried about when it comes to improvisation is expressing yourself. Okay? So if you maintain focus there on expressing yourself and not worrying about what everyone else is thinking about your improvisation, you will be successful at improvisation. Okay? Uh, so worry about your expression. Don't give a darn about what anyone else has to say. All right, so now there's my example. I have my C to F. I'm playing some simple little lick in the right hand. Now listen to what happens if I don't play that left hand accompaniment steady. Right? So if I don't know the left hand, I'm like messing up these chords all over the place, how am I realistically ever going to be able to play something on the right hand uh, that's going to like, you know, sound good? It's going to be tough because the left hand accompaniment is failing you. Remember, an accompaniment should support, should buoy, should help that right hand sound good. All right? So first element, accompaniment. Extremely important. Element number two, this is the ingredients or the notes, scales, whatever you want to call it. It's the raw material that you are going to use to create your improvisational lines. Okay, so this is the interesting thing though. The notes that you choose are the least important part of your improv. But where most students spend most of their time and an inordinate amount of time is thinking about the notes, okay? So how many times do we say like, oh, I gotta learn all of those modes because somehow if I learn the modes, everything like, you know, all the secrets of improvisation, you know, uh, get revealed to me. They don't, uh, but you know, that's, that's what you're led to believe. Or uh, what scale do I use over this chord? And what scale do I use over that chord? Okay, and that's fine, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with learning modes. They're important. Learning scales over chords, that's important as well. I'm not saying that that stuff is not important and doesn't have value or its place. What I'm saying is that students place so much focus on that versus the feel of the improvisation and just getting the improvisation out and really spend more time on this element than the next element, which I'm going to talk about, all right? So when I say that the notes are of, are of least important, it's because the notes that you choose can really be kind of um, buried, all right? They can kind of be buried if you have your other elements in place. So remember, element number one was accompaniment, all right? Or pillar number one, however you want to think about it. Your first element is accompaniment. You really want to make sure you have your accompaniment down. Element number two, that's your ingredients. What notes are we going to use, okay? Now, um, yeah, I should tell you this as well. We'll cover the notes, the scales, and the other ingredients needed to make your solo shine inside the course. So if you're like wondering, well, what about scales and what, don't worry, we're going to cover all of that stuff. This is what I want to get to though. Element number three, rhythm, okay? So rhythm, is the one element that makes all the difference in your improvisation, okay? So I was just saying how 
the notes, the ingredients, the filling of your improvisation is really of least importance. Let me, let me show you, uh, give you an example. So again, I'm just gonna play my C7 to my F7, just using my simple shell uh, uh, chords here and just a simple uh, play along beat. The first time I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it and I'm going to uh, really focus on the notes, but you're gonna hear that the rhythm and everything is gonna be kinda all over the place, all right? The second time I play it, I'm gonna focus more on just like the groove, the rhythm, just the, the expression of it and playing it confidently versus trying to like, like really, uh, 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 you know, take a deep dive on like, well, what notes should I do? What notes? I'm not going to worry so much about the notes. Instead, I'm going to worry more about the rhythm and the feel of it. So first time I'm going to worry about notes. Second time I'm going to worry about rhythm and feel. Here's the first time, worrying about notes. Okay. All of those are right notes. All of those notes fit over those chords. But it doesn't sound very good, does it? And it doesn't sound very good because there's just no flow to it. Now this time, I'm really gonna play all some crazy notes. But listen to what happens when I play it with better rhythm. Now, what you'll notice is that I was all over the place. I wasn't thinking about what the right notes were uh, at all. But I did kind of bring it in. I was trying to like find some of those right notes eventually. And eventually I did. And I was able to kind of bring it all on in. But you notice how with the right rhythm, it's less about the notes. And it becomes more about the groove, the feel. This is one thing that I find that a lot of times is left out in improvisation. So much energy is spent on the theoretical principles of, well, what notes do I play? What notes do I play? And the problem is now improvisation goes from here, the heart, up to here, the brain. And then improvisation becomes very intellectualized. Well, no, you can't play a major seventh on a dominant seventh chord because that is an avoid note. So you're not supposed to play avoid notes uh, on these chords. You know, take it, take it easy, all right? Don't blow a gasket there. I'm going to tell you, when you improvise, you can play any note. It does not matter what note you play, okay? That's the first thing. Now, you're going to follow up with me and you're going to say, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second, Willie. Really? I can play any note? Okay. Obviously, there's some, some catches to this. You could play any note when it comes to improvisation as long as you're thinking about targeting, you're thinking about trying to bring it back into, you know, the harmony, okay? But the point is you don't have to think about every note, every scale, all of the time because that is going to make it extremely difficult for you to be able to get an improvisation out, all right? I, I, I could tell you. There's so much theory and, you know, I hear from all of you, right? I hear from thousands of students every year. And the one thing that I hear when it comes to improvisation is there's too much theory. I can't think about it fast enough. Well, of course you can't think about it fast enough, right? Uh, it's a lot, right? It's a lot of stuff to think about. And you're trying to think about it, boom, 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 boom. And of course, as adults, we're trying to like, you know, I just started to improvise two weeks ago. Why can't I do it now? I did it starting two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it takes a little bit longer than two weeks. The problem is with all of this theory that's involved, it makes it inordinately difficult for most human beings to be able to improvise in real time quickly when having to manage all of that theory. Okay, so that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about in this course is trying to make that easier for yourself. So how is this program different than other improvisation programs? Number one, uh, you got to understand, I've been doing this a long time, okay? Uh, I know there's many other people online, and there's many other great teachers online and great players online, um, but I have been not only performing, but also teaching. And that's a key difference as well, is that, you know, I'll see some teachers, it's funny, like, I'll, I'll see some, some teachers, I've been teaching since 2005, and I'm like, okay, good, keep, keep doing it, keep doing it, you know, that, 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 that's awesome. But I've been teaching since... Oh my goodness gracious, uh, 1985, I think was when I had my first students. 
uh, 86, something like that. Um, so I've been doing this a long time. I've been teaching online for 20 years. Uh, so uh, I have a lot of skill in doing this. And not only do I have a lot of skill in teaching it, but I've created curriculum, many different curriculums, all right? Uh, starting with Jazz Kids, I've written for uh, major publishers like Mel Bay, Hal Leonard, Alfred Publishing, all right? They all have uh, my stuff published as well, written several books, on and on it goes, okay? You could see my pedigree back at the site. This isn't about me, like, you know, uh, clapping myself on the back here. Um, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that this whole approach has been a culmination of different ways in which I've been teaching improvisation. And now what I'm starting to do is like pick out the best of each one of those and putting it into this whole improvisation program and really trying to design it so that it is a be all end all, like kind of like a compendium of improvisation. All right, that's number one. Number two, the program is mostly going to be doing versus lecture. I know right now, bad, 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 a lot, lot, lot of talk coming out of me right now, okay, because this is more like me explaining to you about the program and kind of getting you started with the program. But when it comes to the actual exercises, this is going to be more like, okay, so I'm going to explain to you a little bit, like, okay, so we're going to start with a simple bass line, right? It's bass line is built off of a C minor, five finger scale, it's the root, the flat of third, the fourth, and the fifth. I would say use your pinky, middle finger, second finger, and thumb. Try playing along with me. One, two, ready, go. Okay. And I'm going to talk while we're doing it. Okay, so now when you're doing it, make sure that you're pulling and using that grab technique that's going to help you to be able to play this nice and steady. Also make sure when you get to that last note, don't do this. See how I just jumped into that? Hold it out for the one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, right? So there's a small example of how I'm going to show you and we're going to be doing this together. So you're going to be playing along with me while, uh, you know, w while we're doing it. So then we get the accompaniment down and I might, uh, I'll go through a rhythm, explain a rhythm to you. And then I might show you some little lick. It might be like, you know, something like that, okay? So then I, I'm going to say something to you like, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it one time, and then I'll keep the bass line going, and then I want you to play it the second time. Don't worry, I'll tell you when it's your time to play. Me first. All right, get ready, and you go. Boo ba da ba dum. All right, now my turn. One, two, your turn. Do ba da da dum. Okay, now you go ahead and play it here. I'm going to play it up here. So you just play it along with me. All right, and the lessons are going to go uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes in length. So the idea is that you could put the lesson on, the exercise, right? Play it along with me, and you could, right from start to finish, there's your practice time. So it's not like you got to watch the video and now go to your keyboard or piano and then try and do the lesson. Watch the video, go to, no, 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 that's not it. Now what you could do is watch the video and play along with me at the same time. So it's, uh, it's a very nice way of being able to uh, interact with me, uh, you know, through the video so that you're not just having to like listen to me talk and then you go ahead and try and do it, all right? All right, so this is going to be the program flow. We're going to have some core lessons, and some of these core lessons are going to be, you know, things like maybe a rhythmic preparation or talking about vocalization. We might have a lesson on targeting and target notes. We might have a lesson on uh, maybe uh, chord voicing or guide tones or something like that. So some of these big core lessons, and there's not going to be many of those core lessons, right? But you, like think of it as like the, they're going to be like the pillars, right? And then you're going to have all of these exercises that go in between, all right? So then the exercises, we're going to be doing those together. And then finally, you're going to have quizzes, live Q&A sessions, there's going to be certificates, all right? So it's a very uh, interactive uh, program. And the program is designed so that you can, you know, no matter what type of learner you are, if you're a visual learner, if you're an oral learner, all right, if you're a learner which is like, hey, I just got to do this thing, okay, well, it's really been designed so that every type of learning uh, style is going to be represented in the course. All right, so number three, the focus is on creating strong improvisation lines. 
not just learning scales to use, not just learning theory, right? Where, of course, it's, it's going to be a bunch of theory baked in, just like all of my lessons have a bunch of theory baked in. But really, the idea is going to be that you are going to learn by doing. You're going to learn how to create those strong improvisation lines. It's not just going to be, you know, this is the scale that you use. Number four, sheet music, quizzes, live follow-up, challenges, certificates, oh my, yes, there's going to be so much involved in the course. Um, remember, the course will be all recorded. You can follow it at your own pace. That's a very important thing to understand. So if you're going to go away for a couple of weeks or you just need to take a little bit of time, then absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. You can come back to the course and pick up where you left off. All right, so now let's go through a little sheet music example. Okay, so this is right from the first exercise. And I just want to show you just briefly. I understand it's small. Don't worry, it's not designed, you know, right now so that you, you could be reading it on the screen. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through each of this. So this first box is your accompaniment. So just like what we are just doing, all right? So this is where we're going to start, right? So if you want a little preparation for next week's exercise, that's what we're starting on. And it's kind of hard to see, but you'll notice that in here, um, uh, let me just get my... Uh, my cursor on here. I get this nice big cursor. It makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so in here, you'll notice that all of your fingering is written in, right? So again, this being a culmination of learning or a culmination of uh, my different teaching, I'm trying to take all of the elements that students have asked for. And one thing that students have asked for time and again is, well, show me the fingering. Well, you see that there's a lot of fingering that has been written in in, in these different sections where it needs to be, right? So I'm trying to show you the fingering so that you're really kind of going to get set up for success right away. So you start with an accompaniment first. Then the next thing that we do is then we move on to um, our scale or notes, ingredients. Uh, in the final product, it's, it's labeled as ingredients. I kind of like that name a little bit better than scales or anything like that because ingredients means that it could really be anything. It doesn't have to be a scale. It doesn't have to be a chord. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, a five-finger scale. It could really be, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want. Maybe even clusters, you know, or clusters of chords. Anyway, that's going to be the second section. You're going to have uh, ingredients. So in this particular case, we're working on this C minor five-finger scale. Okay? The next thing is we're going to work through a rhythm. And the thing that you're going to notice is that the rhythm is all going to be vocalized as well. So this rhythm right here is da, di, ba, di, ba, di, ba, do, ooh, ooh, ooh. Or I, I uh, like to say great big whole note or one, two, three, four, whatever you want to do. But it's written on the note B and I'll explain it in the exercise as well that it, 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 the note is just just for a note. It's really, it's, it's a rhythm, so it could be played on any note. But if we're just going to play it for right now, da, di, ba, di, ba, di, ba, one, two, three, four. So that's our rhythm. And then the next thing that we do is then we take that rhythm, apply it to our ingredients, and now we create this lick, this phrase, that then we can learn how to play over this left hand accompaniment. Then we go through a couple of different variations. I give you two different variations. Now, this is really important because, you know, it's this is typically what you find, right? You, you, you do this. You do these four. It's like, okay, here's your accompaniment, a scale, rhythm, okay, and here it is, and this is what I've done many times in the past. The reason that the variations are so important is because then you could see how when you go from here to here, oh, all right, so this is what a variation looks like, and this is what a variation sounds like, and this is how he's changing the notes to create something new. The variations are, in my opinion, where the power lies because this is where you start to learn how to twist and turn your improvisation. The reason that's important is because that's what gives you all of the, that's how you squeeze out the most juice out of it. Because it's not just learning one lick, right? It's not just learning that one lick right there. It's now learning how to change it. So now what do you have? Now you end up having, you know, a couple of different licks. All right. So, uh, and then finally, we write our own. Okay. So the next thing is we write our own lick and 
you know, uh, and, and then, you know, f from there, you come up with your own leg, and I can, uh, 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 you know, we can talk about those during the live Q&A sessions. You can go ahead and share those as well. All right, so who is this program for? program is for anyone who wants to learn improvisation or wants to improve their current improvisation skills. So even if you're an absolute beginner, you're fine. So I'm an absolute newbie. No problem. That program, it starts simple and it moves gradually through more difficult exercises, right? So if you're a complete newbie to improvisation, you'll be fine. If you're a more advanced player, I'm not going to lie to you. The beginning exercises are likely going to be easy for you. And you make the decision. You could say, ah, I'm not gonna do the beginning ones. I'm gonna start maybe at exercise number 10, you know, and go from there. Personally, I'd say do the beginning ones because it wouldn't be bad for you. It would really be helpful for you. And there's a little bit of a twist that I'm going to add. And that twist is that we're not just gonna do it in one key. We're also gonna do these exercises in multiple keys. So you'll learn how to be able to move the idea into more than one key. For example, that first exercise, right? Right, so like, I forget what the lick was. It d d doesn't matter. Actually, right here, I got the lick right here. Uh, what are we at? Okay. All right, so that that's 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 the first uh, uh, first lick right there. So. We're going to learn it in C minor, like this, right? But then I'm also going to show you how to move it into other keys, like... Maybe go into D minor. What about B flat? Right, so you're going to learn how to move into other keys. Now, if you're a newbie, you're a beginner to improvisation, I'll explain this in the lessons as well, don't worry about moving into other keys. The other keys are really for the more intermediate to advanced level players. So the idea is, how I'm designing this is that even though the exercise is easy, I'm going to give you tools to make it more difficult if you want, right? So that's gonna be great for intermediate to advanced level players. It's also gonna be great for those students that are just like, they're the go-getters and they're like, I, I wanna do as much as I can. Give me extra credit. Well, there's your extra credit. All right, so uh, this is a really important question. Is this only for jazz? No, it is not only for jazz. We be begin with a jazz and blues style because, let's face it, they're at the heart of improvisation. When we think about improv, you know, jazz and blues are kind of like the two styles that kind of come to mind right away. But these concepts work over other styles as well. And then later on in the program, I'll show you how to shift some of these concepts into other styles. But really, we're going to be starting with jazz and blues to begin with, right? So what's included? Step-by-step -step, Do It With Me lessons, detailed sheet music, backing tracks. I'm going to be using iReal Pro for the backing tracks. If you don't have iReal Pro, don't worry. I'm also going to export them as an MP3 so you could play along with. However, I would suggest grabbing iReal Pro uh, on your tablet or phone or whatnot or on your desktop because it is a nice piece of software. I have no affiliation with iReal Pro. I don't know those guys who made it. I didn't make the software. I can't give any support on it, but I can tell you that I've used it for years. I've recommended it to students. They love it, uh, and, the, and the app has been around for years, so I, and, and I don't foresee that it's going to go anywhere anytime soon, right? Plus, it's also cheap, or relatively cheap. It's $50. $15 US, which, you know, for everything that you get in the app, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice deal. So uh, all of those iReal Pros will be, all of those iReal Pro files will be available. You can download them. And then the beauty is with iReal Pro, if you're not familiar with it, you can change the tempo, you can change the style, you can change the key, you can repeat it, you can go up half steps. I mean, like, there's all of these different things that you can do. So as a practice tool, it makes it incredibly useful uh, for you to be like really, you know, really get the most out of your practice. Uh, we're also going to do live follow-up Q&As uh, and challenges, right? So if you need help, don't worry. You're going to be able to have some live Q&A with me as well. And then finally, there are quizzes and certificates. So you'll take a quiz at the end of each exercise, each lesson, right? And then if you get a, a certain passing grade on all of your quizzes, then you can earn a certificate on the course, right? And then the 
quizzes are going to be legit in that you're only going to have, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be one or two times. I might give you two opportunities to go through and be able to pass the quiz. But if you don't pass it on the second time, well, then you don't pass it on the second time. All right. So, um, so it, it, it's, it's really designed to make it very legitimate for you so that when you earn that certificate um, uh, in the program, you can really feel good about where you're at. So how do you access it? It's very simple. Uh, uh, the program is going to be available for all full Jazz Edge members. All right, so you have to be a full Jazz Edge member to access the program. And if you need, uh, if you're not a member, just go back to jazzedge.com and you can see all of the different uh, membership options there. Uh, my no bowl piano members will have access to a couple of the lessons. All right, and um, I will probably. Uh, give uh, uh, some of the first lessons will be available for free on YouTube, but sheet music, all of that kind of stuff, all the backing tracks, uh, they will not be available for uh, for free. All right. So if you really want to take full advantage of the program, you really want to be a full Jazz Edge member. Okay. So when do we start? We will start one week from today. Friday, October 23rd is when the first lesson will be released. And this is going to be how the schedule works. So the lesson will be released on a Friday. The following Thursday, okay, I will do a live Q&A. The time is still to be determined. I'm not sure exactly what time. Likely it's probably going to be at this same time, 1 p.m. Eastern. I understand that that time does not work well for everybody, but please just remember time zones. I'm on the East Coast, so like New York time zone. I cannot find a time zone that is going to work for everyone. I had one of my Australian friends write in like uh, about today's session. He's like, well, 1 p.m. is 3 a.m. East uh, in Australian time. So now, right, there's just no way I, could, I can find a time that's, that's going to work for everybody. So, but don't worry, all of those live follow-ups will be recorded as well, and they will be available uh, for you as a replay. And then finally, number three, you work at your own, play, at your own pace. So, uh, you know, just because I release a lesson on Friday, if you're not ready for the new lesson, then don't do it. Nothing says that you have to, like, <laughs> every week, you know, uh, stay on top of this, all right? And I want to stress that before the program even starts. I don't want you to be stressed about this, okay? I'm going to release something every week because... Some people are going to be looking for it every week. Some people can do it every week. Some people want to, uh, you know, make it part of their practice schedule. But some students won't be able to do that. And I want to just tell you again, it's absolutely fine, right? It's absolutely fine. If you can come to the Q&A session, the follow-up sessions, you know, great, come. If you can't make it, don't worry. I'm not going to be upset at you. I'm not going to kick you out of the program, you know, right? If you're not doing the uh, lessons every single Friday, if you have to miss a week or two, no worries. It's, it's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a consistent schedule because I find that that consistent schedule is the best way for you to be able to find success. All right, so what's the name of the new improv program? Well, I need a drum roll. The Confident Improviser, all right? So I have been uh, keeping this under wraps, and it's kind of funny. It's a little, little tongue-in-cheek, but... Doing this for as long as I have online, I have seen a lot of, you know, uh, uh, the best piano program ever pop up here, there, there, you know, like, like brand new shiny things, you know, all these new, you know, piano teachers and piano programs and whatnot that were never there when I started this 20 years ago. And of course, you know, uh, uh, how does the saying go? Uh, theft is uh, uh, a, uh, you know, the greatest form of flattery. Well, I have found that a lot of people over the years have taken, you know, piano essentials. You know, I, I created the, the, the course Piano Essentials, and now, lo and behold, I see Piano Essentials on, you know, everybody else's piano site. So I kept this one under wraps for quite a while. I didn't want anyone to know what the name of it is. Well, now you know, the confident improviser, okay? So now if you see the confident improviser someplace else, 
you know where you, you, you heard it first, all right? Uh, there's only one other place that I saw, and that was uh, a sax teacher, Bob Reynolds, who is a fantastic uh, sax teacher and sax saxophonist. He plays with Snarky Puppy. Uh, a great guy. would love to meet him someday, Bob Reynolds, all right? So shout out to you, Bob. Um, but um, so now you know, all right? So you've heard it here first. So why the confident improviser? Because... After you go through this course, the goal is that you are going to feel confident in your improvisation. And wh while I talk about this, let me just also say questions. You can go ahead and start queuing up your questions. Go ahead and chat in your questions right now, and I will be answering them. All right, so the reason that I, I uh, uh, chose the confident improviser is because when it comes to improvisation, it's about confidence, right? Um, and if we think, it's, it's the same thing as like language, right? If you're not confident with your vocabulary, then it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to communicate, right? For instance, if you learn a bunch of new vocabulary words, you know, it's kind of hard like to, to use them in your everyday vocabulary confidently because you just don't have a lot of experience with that. Well, the idea behind the Confident Improviser um, course is that since we're going to be doing this and we're going to be building upon it and it's going to be a graded, gradual approach. So we're not going to go from this, right, into, you know, we're not going to be doing all of that, right? We're not, we're not going to go from there to there because that's too much of a jump. So no, instead what, we, what I'm going to do is it's been designed so that it really just steps gradually, step by step by step. So once you have reached the end of the program, you're really going to feel confident in your improvisation. If you've done the exercises, if you've participated, right, and you've, you've really like given it a, a solid go, you are going to feel much, much, much more confident in your improvisation. Now, some questions that I did not, uh, you know, uh, answer in this uh, uh, presentation is how long is the program going to go? And the honest answer is I don't really know. My guess right now is it's likely going to go for a year, maybe more, all right? So this is going to be stuff that's going to be added to, added to, added to. Already, I'm looking at them right over there on my, on my uh, work desk. Uh, there's 22 exercises right now that I have put together, right? And we are only, like, we're just kind of scratching the surface. So if one exercise a week, well, that's 22 weeks. So we're going to get to 52 weeks very, very easily uh, with our improvisation because there's obviously quite a bit involved with improvisation. We will be learning um, how to improvise over popular chord forms. Uh, and uh, popular progressions. We will end up learning how to take the ideas from these exercises and then moving them into actual songs, right? So it's not like you're just going to learn exercise ex after exercise after, after exercise. No, you're going to learn exercises. We're going to do all of this together. We're going to have those core lessons that kind of bind together some of these uh, concepts that you're learning. And then we're going to be applying them to song after song after song so that you really once again, feel confident, because that's what improvisation is all about. When you sit down to improvise, you need to feel confident, right? And that's what you're going to get in this course, all right? So, questions. Let's see. Uh, so, uh, got quite a bit of you, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of... Uh, uh, check going on here. Hello to everybody. I wish I could say hello to everyone. Uh, hi, Joseph, David, Marlene, Kevin, Doug, Bert, Chris, Bruce, Paulo, Reg, Allison, Devin, Jerry, David, Virgil, Anne, Elaine, Audrey, Joe, yeah, Anne, Deborah, Anne, Doug, Jerry, Michelle. Like, hello, everybody. If I didn't call your name, I am sorry. I really appreciate you being here and listening to me talk about this. All right, so, uh, so let's see. Um, Devin asked, um, how does this differ from uh, the summer, uh, summer Piano Jam? So Summer Piano Jam is a one-off program, meaning that it's not a membership. You buy it once, you own it for life. Um, and that program is really working through the blues, Blues improvisation, there's a jazz element to it as well. It's teaching you improvisation, okay? Uh, but it's all like within that blues 
kind of uh, progression and blues uh, sound. Um, this is going to be different in that we are going to be stepping outside of those blues chords and those blues progressions and starting to like really show you, um, uh, I'll be showing you progressions and exercises that work over standards and jazz tunes and not just one, four, five chords, okay? So that, that, that's really the big difference. Also, Summer Piano Jam, it's a real nice program. It, like, it's like, starts here, da -da, but it, like, Summer Piano Jam is set. All right? it's, not, it's no longer living, breathing, okay? whereas the confident improviser is now a living, breathing uh, um, uh, course. All right? This is going to be something that's, that's, that's going to be you know, added to. We're going to be doing live Q&As, you know, it's, uh, challenges. It's, it's, uh, and also, uh, there's a lot of elements that are added to it, like the quizzes, the certificates, and stuff that are not found in some of my other programs like Summer Piano Jam. So it's really much more multimodal learning uh, for all different learning styles. Um, Kevin, uh, how many lessons are in the course and once they are all released, will they be available on the Jazz Edge site? Okay, so um, what's going to happen, again, uh, if we go back to this schedule, the lesson is released on Friday, there will be a follow-up on the following Thursday, and then you work at your own pace. What I, I could have said here, that it, it just rinse and repeat. It's like lesson released Friday, follow-up. Let's release Friday, follow up. All right, so what this means is that, um, let me pull out my schedule here so that I have, so I'm talking the actual proper dates. Uh, okay, so the first lesson gets released on the 23rd of October. The follow up then is going to be on the 29th of October. So this first follow up will be Thursday, the 29th. All right, on Friday, the 30th, the next lesson will get released. And then November 5th is the next follow-up. The next day, Friday, November 6th, will be the next lesson will be released, all right? So these lessons are going to constantly be released every Friday, every Friday, every Friday, all right? So it's not like you have to wait for the whole program to be done, all right, um, before, you know, it's, it's all released. And one of the reasons why I'm not recording all of it all at once is because it also allows a little bit of flexibility if I find that, especially on these follow-up days, where students are like finding like, oh, wait, this moved a little bit fast. Well, now it allows me to kind of sneak a lesson in there, okay? And it allows a little bit of, uh, you know, improvisation for, for me as well to be able to uh, add something in there if I feel like students are in need of a core lesson or an exercise. Let me explain the core lesson and the exercises a little bit better as well. So the exercises, that's the meat and potatoes, right? That, that, that's really where you get all of your improvisation skills. Those are the exercises. That's where we're going to be doing this stuff together. The core lessons, right, are these lessons that are, um, are going to be more of a lecture type lesson. And this is where I'm going to explain some key components. For instance, uh, one that, that is a definite core lesson that I'm going to talk about is uh, starting and ending target notes, right? So target notes, I'm going to give you like a 15, 20 minute explanation, deep dive of like, this is what target notes are, this is why they're important, this is how we use them, and all of that, okay? Now the reason I'm going to do that in a core lesson is that then I don't have to constantly keep explaining it in the exercises. So then, when we get to target notes, I could be like, uh, let's say we're doing, uh, doing this. Right, so you see, I got to that target note of A. Now, if you need to know about target notes, just go back to the core lesson on target notes uh, for all of the explanation on that. All right, so that's all I need to say, and then I can keep moving on, right? So I don't have to, like, like uh, 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 go on a tangent in the lesson and, you know, kind of explain, you know, what target notes and all of that, right? And I understand from a learning perspective that it becomes challenging for students, it becomes challenging for all of you when you're listening to me and uh, like I'm doing something, you're like we're working through it and then now I start talking about something like say target notes or guide tones. You're like, oh wait a second, I was just doing this. So I decided I don't want to structure this course this way, 
right? Instead, what I want to do is I want to take any of that like lecture kind of stuff, put it into its own lesson that you can always go back and refer to. It's like an encyclopedia. You can refer back to that core lesson. And then all of the exercises are exercises. So all of the talking that I'm doing right now, uh-uh. It ain't going to be happening in the exercises, all right? The exercises are really going to be like bing, bang, boom. We're going to be getting into it, and you're going to be doing it along with me, all right? So, and I'm going to be challenging you and, and, and encouraging you. Like, your hand should be on the piano. So, like, even if I'm talking while I'm doing this, if I'm playing this, you should be playing this along with me, all right? So you can play it and listen to what it is that I'm doing, all right? So now we're going to get into the lick. All right, now you do it with me. All right, again, all right, so it's like going to be like really, and right now I'm going a little bit fast. I'm going to slow it down, especially for the beginner lessons, all right? But the idea is that you're going to be working along with me. It's not going to be like, okay, well, the reason that I chose this note is because it's the minor, th no, 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 I'm not going to be talking all of that stuff. That kind of discussion is going to happen in those core lessons. All right, let's see. Uh... Will the replay be in Jazz Edge to watch as all other lessons and courses? Um, yes. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first introductory or preparation uh, 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 webinar here, and that's going to be the first uh, lesson in the course, okay? So a good way of like, you know, if you got to go back and just kind of like, well, what did you say we were going to learn again in the course? You can always come back and you can always watch this. And then the core lessons... The exercises, the quizzes, everything is going to be within the course, okay? So it's all going to be within that course uh, for you, all right? So you're not going to have to worry about going all over the place. It's all going to be in one spot for you. Again, just as a reminder, you need to be a full Jazz Edge member in order to, uh, you know, really fully participate in this course. Now, I do not say that because I'm trying to, like, beat people over the head, like, are you going to sign up? You're going to sign up? You're going to sign Sign up if it makes sense for you. Uh, I think that the price point is a very, very fair and uh, uh, price point. It's a very, it, like, the value that you get in the lessons uh, and in the site is just, it's crazy. Right? Like you, you get a huge amount of value uh, between the lessons, the weekly coaching, the weekly uh, uh, office hours, this new confident impro uh, improviser program. You get a lot of value. All right. So, but the deal is, in order to like really fully take full advantage of this program, you need to be a full Jazz Edge member. Now, if you have any watching this and you're not a member, well, that's simple. Just go back to jazzedge.com, sign up for a membership. If you're a no bowl piano member, then just write in and then we can talk about different ways in which you can upgrade or you can just go to your subscriptions page and you can upgrade right from there as well. All right, so anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, Reg, yes, different than Summer Piano Jam. I explained that. You, I'm sure you're good with that now. Uh, <laughs> the incompetent improviser, I like that. Uh, will this be available for Piano and Willie members? Uh, no, it will not, all right? Uh, piano and Willie, I... I greatly appreciate all of my Piano with Willie members, but Piano with Willie at this point now is not really getting any more new material. I might put up a couple of the free lessons on the Piano with Willie site, but honestly, so much work has been done on the Jazz Edge site to like really bring it all together that I'm starting to phase out the Piano with Willie site. Now, don't worry. If you're still a Piano with Willie member, that site is still going to stay up there. You can still remain a member of the Piano with Willie site. So nothing to worry about. But uh, it is not, I'm not taking these, these lessons and putting them on the Piano with Willie site. It's only going to be for Jazz Edge members. Now, if you're a Piano with Willie member and you're interested in upgrading to Jazz Edge, Write in to me, okay? Let's talk about it. I'll take a look at your account. I'll see what I can do for you. All right. um, Arturo, guys, just so you know, this is not a live stream. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to tell you about. You know what? Here you go. This is the best way of seeing that this is a live stream. says 2 o'clock on my watch, all right? So this is most definitely a live stream. Um, uh, I know a lot of times it's funny, like especially like a lot of the marketing stuff, it's like, you know, it's a recorded thing and like meant to, 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 to be live. 
eh, eh, we're alive right now. Uh, so Arturo, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Deborah Ann, I purchased several of your improv blues and standards programs. Uh, how will this material content be different from what I already have? I see how the, uh, I see how the environment will change. Um, so look at it this way. This is an iteration. So meaning that um, like, like all of us as human beings, as we move on and we learn new things, then it gets better. Okay. So uh, I guess a good way of explaining it is uh, imagine me as a carpenter. Okay. So you wanted me to build cabinets in your house and I've been doing carpent carpentry for say 15 years. Okay, yeah, I can come in and build cabinets and they probably look beautiful and, and, and great. Now let's say 10 years later, you want me to build some other cabinets. Well, now I have 10 more years of skill under my belt. What do you think is going to happen? Is it going to be a better cabinet or worse? It should be a better cabinet, right? So that's really, uh, like this is an iteration meaning that um, uh, uh, the stuff that I've done before is all good stuff. I still believe in it and it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. But this now is making it more streamlined. The Confident Improviser program is designed to make this whole process of learning improvisation more streamlined. So this is me taking the last decade of my improvisation uh, tutorials and really like picking apart what works and what doesn't work and trying to create a program for you that's going to make it easier for you to be able to learn improvisation and be able to actually learn it and again be confident with it. So whereas my other improvisation stuff might have gone that far and then this one went this far and that did over here and that was over here, now this is more of a encompassing. Like it's really going to be designed so that um, so that you're not just learning this much, but you're learning the whole arc of improvisation. That's why the program is going to take so long, and that's why the program is likely going to go well over a year. Um, Kevin, are you, after you release the 10 lessons, for example, will they all be available for any Jazz Edge member to access all 10 of them at any time? This includes new members. Oh, okay, yes, that, 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 that's a really great question. Thank you for asking that, Kevin. Um, all right, so let's talk actual dates. The very first lesson is gonna be released October 23rd, right? The um, following Thursday will be the follow-up. The next lesson will be released October 30th, okay? So let's just take those two. So first lesson, October 23rd, Next lesson, October 30th. Next lesson after that, November 6th, okay? So let's say that you register for a new membership on November 5th. Well, now, wait a second. You already missed the first two, right? You missed those first two lessons. Don't worry. It's all recorded, and it's on the site, okay? So now, the only thing that you missed was that opportunity to join those two live follow-up Thursdays, right? Uh, but then you can just join the other ones moving forward, okay? So... Um, the point is this, that all of it is recorded, it's added to the site on those days, and whenever you sign up for a membership, you get access to it all. So it's not like when you sign up for a membership, you get a start, you got to wait the following, I hate that stuff, that whole drip content stuff, I, 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 I don't like it. I don't like managing it, I don't like doing that to students. Um, it's a whole marketing trick, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's a trick designed to keep you to, uh, designed to make you keep your membership because, oh, I can't cancel my membership because then I can't get the next lesson. All right. So when you sign up, you get access to it all. All right. So if you signed up today, well, there's nothing there yet except for this video, right? So you'll have to wait till next week to get that first lesson. But if you sign up, let's say a year from now, well then now you get all of those, that whole year's worth of lessons. But this is the catch, okay? If you sign up a year from now, uh, yes, you get access to the full confident improviser, but you don't get access to that live uh, follow-up, all right? So if you really want the live follow-up, you want the ability to like interact with me live, and we don't do it through YouTube. We do it through Zoom where like, it's an actual, you know, uh, interaction. So if you want that, then you want to be a member now or very, very soon, all right, so that you could take advantage of all of that live training, okay? Uh, let's see here. 
Gil, will the links be on the calendar soon? Uh, yes, I will add them to the calendar, all right? Please explain follow-up a little bit more. How will that be structured? All right, so um, basically what the follow-up is, is it's, it's going to be very similar in vain to my coaching where everybody gets in and they can chat in a, 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 a link uh, to a video of them playing and then I give feedback, all right? So basically what we will do is the follow-up is going to be on the previous lesson, all right? So uh, let's just talk the first one, all right? So again, this is like the sheet music for the first exercise. So next Friday, you, you're going to see this again. You're going to see this as part of the lesson. And like I said, it's going to be anywhere from like a 15 to 20 minute lesson. I'm going to try and keep them about 15 minutes in length because I want you to practice along with me. The first one might be a little bit longer. And as we go and it like, you know, we get into a vibe and a groove on this, well, they might go from 20 minutes down to 15. Maybe some of them might even go down to 10 minutes. I don't know. Um, but it's usually going to be about 15 minutes in length. All right, so next week, next Friday, we're going to go through this. It's going to be like, oh, okay, here we go. All right, so here's, there's the whole lesson. 15 minutes is done. Great. Don't, be, uh, don't uh, forget to join me on Thursday for any follow-up Q&A that you might have. Okay, great. So that, that's, that's all set. We've done the lesson. I release it on Friday. Now, on Thursday, okay, which is, what, six days later, Okay, and the reason I'm releasing it on a Friday is so that then you have all weekend to practice, right? And then you still have a few days at the beginning of the week that you can practice as well. And then Thursday will give you enough time. That gives you almost a full week to practice that first exercise. So then it's going to be Thursday. We're going to be doing the follow-up. It's going to be like, hey, guys, uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the follow-up for the Confident Improviser. Okay, so today we are talking about exercise number one. All right, so uh, if any of you have any questions for exercise number one, feel free to unmute your microphone or go ahead and chat in. If you'd like to um, uh, share your play, you could either play live or you can uh, send in a video, all right? And that's basically how it's structured. So then what you do is you could have a video of you playing, okay? And let's, let's say, you know, let's go over here. and Let's, let's say that you're, you're, you're playing the lick and you're like, right? And I'll be like, hey, all right, great job, David. That's, that, that, that's a really good start. All right, so now what I would suggest that you do is really focus on keeping that left hand steady. Remember, the accompaniment has to be steady. Start with that first, right? So basically what I'm going to do is you're going to, you know, you could play live or recorded. It doesn't matter, okay? And when I say recorded, I mean you record it on your phone, upload it to YouTube or wherever you want to upload it to, and then during the live session, you paste the link to your video, into the chat area, okay? And then I will load it up on the screen here, right? So that, so that we can see it. And then I will give you my thoughts, my follow-up. Now, here's the reality, okay? Let's say that you know, there's a thousand people who are, a thousand students who are, who are participating in... Uh, I don't know what's going on here. This thing is making sound over here. So let's say there's a thousand people who are uh, uh, you know, in the Confident Improviser program. Uh, the reality is that there will not be a thousand people on live uh, for a follow-up. And the reason is, unfortunately, a lot of people get scared off by it. Now, some of it is time. I get it. Like, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon, you know, I'm working, blah, blah, you know, whatever. But a lot of times, it's just people are nervous. Students are nervous. And I want to just encourage you I'm a human being, just like all of you, all right? Like skin, bones, blood, like all of it, all right? So I am no different than you. I put my pants on one leg at a time, all right? So uh, I want to encourage you to understand that the best way of improving at your instrument is through collaboration, okay? I have never seen somebody who's like, you know, you know, literally in the woodshed, right? Or like in a closet practicing for years and years and years and years. And then finally, like, okay, now I'm ready to like, you know, share my playing. No. Even those players who were in the woodshed, they'd be in the woodshed for hours or maybe a day or two, but then they would go to a jam session. It's a, that collaborative process is extremely important, right? Um, so that's why we do that every Thursday. So hopefully that you know, uh, gives you a little bit of a better understanding of what's going to be going on on Thursdays. Uh, will the Q 
Q&A be recorded and can we watch them after the Thursday? Yes. So what will happen is, um, I'm not sure if the Q&A is going to be in the community forum or if I'm going to keep it in the course. The one reason I might put it in the community forum, like I do the coaching and the office hours, is that then a discussion can be had, right? You know, like where like you can um, get in and you know you can like chat amongst yourselves and, and leave comments and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll probably end up doing that, okay? Um, but again, in order to see any of those follow-ups, you'll need to be a full Jazz Edge member. Um, well, thanks, thanks for coming, Allison, and I'll see you next week. All right? Uh, give me a few examples, Stuart asks, give me a few examples of what I'll sound like by the end of the program. Uh, what will success sound like? I, <laughs> that's a really good question, Stuart. All right, so um, this is what I think success is. Okay? So I think success is like, you know, you can like, uh... All right, so here, let's, 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 let's actually do this. Let's have a little bit of fun here. All right, so if I go in here and I type, type in, fly me to the moon, right? Uh, okay, so here I am in my iReal Pro. I got fly me to the moon, okay? So now immediately what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to, you know, be able to play my melody or whatnot over this, so. Right, let's speed this up a little bit more here. Let's go up to 130. All right, so that, that, that's going through and playing the melody. And, and most of us, you know, most students can get to that at, you know, after some practice, right? So you go through and you play the melody, and mm. I, you know, you're doing shells or rootless voicings, whatever it is you're doing in the left hand. So typically after playing that standard, you don't want to just play it one time. Well, what do you typically do? You want to improvise over it. That's going to be what success is. So now it's you look at something like this, and I say, okay, Stuart, go ahead and improvise. Now, what does that mean? What do I do, right? Now, typically, when you're looking at something like this and you've never improvised before, this would be a pretty darn bad place to begin improvising, right? There's a lot of chords, there's a lot of harmony, you know, the progression, like the, the scale, like, you know, it, it becomes very, very challenging. And this is, this is unfortunately the challenge, is that a lot of times when it comes to improv, it'll be like, okay, start here. Right? Or let's improvise over, you know, this this another another good one here. Um, let's take this one. Right? Autumn leaves. So and I, I like doing it in G minor, not in C minor. Uh, blah, 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 where am I? Yeah. Um, so you take a look at autumn leaves and you're like, uh, okay, go ahead and improvise. And this is where unfortunately even some beginner jazz improvisation. Uh, 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 you know, a resource. So we'll start with something like this. This is a bad place to start. It's way too complicated. There's too much going on. So we start much easier than that. But you're asking, where will I get to? This is where you end up getting to. That then you could sit down and play this. And left hand chords, we're not going to worry so much about what you're going to play left hand chords for right now. It could be shells, it could be rootless voicings. As you go through the program, you're going to learn all different types of left hand accompaniments. So it's going to be up to you what you want to do. In this case, I'm going to do rootless chord voicings, all right? And I'm going to improvise over that. So then I'll be able to do. So this is an example of just improvising over the first eight measures of this. All right, so the idea, success will mean that you know how to be able to improvise and create a solo. Now, are you going to be able to solo like Bill Evans? Right? Come on. Again, that goes under the, like when I first started, uh, uh, you know, this presentation, you have to be realistic. And anyone who thinks like, oh, well, I did the Confident Improviser program for six months and... Right, you know, like you're not going to sound like Bill Evans, number one, because Bill Evans is Bill Evans. I won't sound like Bill Evans. But number two, like Bill Evans played for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, like, so as long as you're remaining realistic and saying, okay, I want to be able to put together a halfway decent solo, you'll be able to do that, right? You'll be able to understand rhythmically that this is not good, right? Right? 
you're going to understand that, no, that solo sounds like crap, okay? That, that's just bad, right? It, it, it doesn't sound good. That's not what you're going to create, okay? Now, are you going to be able to create... Whatever, right? Like go on and on and on. Are you going to be able to do that? Well, I don't know. That's going to really depend on how much you practice. Anytime that question of like, what am I going to sound like after this? Of course, you know, uh, like it's a loaded question, right? Because if you practice five minutes a day, five days a week, okay? So you put in a whopping 25 minutes a week. Well, you might be able to get a little something going on and get something, you know, that sounds okay. If you don't practice at all, well, right? But if you practice 45 minutes a day, five days a week, okay, now we're starting to get somewhere, okay? I will tell you this, that, you know, I have the benefit of seeing a lot of different students from all around the globe, okay? Literally, I have students all, all over the map, okay? Every, every continent. Um, and I get a chance to see, to, to work with them in a live situation. And there's one student in particular I was just thinking about, uh, his name is Fahim, and he's on my homeschool piano site. And here's a guy who started on homeschool piano back in like, I don't know, March or April, all right? And now what is it? October. And, you know, you know is, is he blowing the doors off of like, oh my God, you're so incredible. No. But the guy has worked consistently, and I can see how like months later, Wow, yeah. And the beauty is I see this all the time. I see it in my coaching program as well. I'll see students start here, and then months later, they're there. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But like anything else, it depends on how much you practice, right? And how much you participate. If you're one of the players that are like, ah, I'm not going to do that follow-up thing. I don't want anyone to hear my playing. All right, well, then you're going to unfortunately suffer some of the lack of community there, right? Uh, and lack of being able to get my feedback. Uh, but if you really go full bore into this, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this, uh, you know, and I'm going to like practice, you know, as much as I can, and I'm going to participate as much as I can, I can tell you, you are going to see some, some big strides in your playing, big, big strides. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry I can't say your name, um, but Nagoyan, maybe? Uh, are you going to collaborate with the Open Studio guys? Are you considering them competition? I dig your methods more, actually. Um, uh, Open Studio, I think that's um, Peter Martin. Um, and those guys are great. I mean, they're, they're fantastic, all right? If you, if you want to check them out, you know, check them out. Um, no, I don't really collaborate with them. Um, there's a reason why, all right? Um, I, I've had other teachers on the site, and, 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 and that, that was good, but um, the reason that I, I don't really do a lot of this, like, oh, let me go here, let me go here, let me go here, this collaboration is because the reality is that everyone else is, they're trying to do their thing, okay? They're trying to build their list, they're trying to build their students, they're trying to build their herd, and all of that, all right? And, and, and I, I completely respect that for any teacher online, all right? Um, I don't want to get into a situation in which my curriculum and pedagogy now has to be um, altered or affected by some type of collaboration with someone else, okay? And a lot of times those collaborations are unfortunately, they're kind of about marketing, right? It's, it's about like, oh, let's share our list and stuff like that. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that to my students. What I'm really trying to do is I'm really trying to make it so that, look, here's a program for you. You could stay within these walls and you know what you're getting, all right? Um, and it's not going to be a little this, a little that, a little that. You know, it's like I'm really trying to really put the blinders on you so that, okay, stick with me on this. This is what I'm going to show you. Trust me, it works. I'm not saying that what they do is wrong. Okay, I'm not saying that, uh, specifically Open Studio. I think Peter Martin's a, he's a, he's a fantastic player. I don't know about him as a teacher. I haven't really seen his teaching, but uh, his playing, you're like, spot on. He, 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 he's a great player, absolutely. Um, but I don't want to water anything down, 
right? I really want it to be like, I have my vision of what my curriculum is and I know my curriculum works. I've been doing this a long time and with all due respect to Peter and the Open Studio guys, I've likely been doing this online and teaching longer than they have, all right? Um, so I really want to keep the focus on what it is that we're doing, uh, doing here. That's not to say that, hey, look, there's many other teachers and I think there's always a benefit from learning from other teachers, but I just don't want my curriculum and the Jazz Edge curriculum to be watered down or go in many different ways. So that's why I keep it all like when, when you step in the Jazz Edge, you're stepping in the Jazz Edge. That's why when you're in the site, you don't see any advertising for any other sites. You don't like none of that. You're like kind of boop, here we are. Right. And the idea is that I'm trying to make it, and I believe that I'm being successful with this, especially with the design of the site, trying to make it more streamlined and easy for you to reach your ultimate goal, which is to get better at the piano, right? So that's what the ultimate goal is for me. You know, obviously I want to make money, right? I mean, come on, let's, let's call it what it is, right? I, 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 like, I'm not gonna hide behind that. I've put a lot of time into this and I think it's well worth the money and, and you know, I, I enjoy being compensated and I am very appreciative for everybody who supports the site. Uh, but that's not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is, and I think you see it in my teaching, that I love to teach and I love to share and my students and their success is what's really most important to me. Um, I really want to see you guys be successful. So that's why I don't go out and do all of this other stuff because sometimes from a pedagogical standpoint, from a teacher standpoint, and trust me, I think about this stuff a lot, is that... I find that sometimes that, oh, next shiny thing, ooh, next shiny thing. And I've been doing this long enough now where uh, I see with students that they can definitely get mm, sidetracked by the next shiny uh, object. And I don't want to see that happen to uh, students. All right, so let's see here. Uh... Oh, that's a good question. Joe, can I ask, uh, can we ask questions on the Friday session as it is taking place? No, the Friday session will not be live. The Friday session will, will be recorded and it will be released on Friday. Uh, what time? I don't know. Likely like noon Eastern time. Now, there's a very specific reason for that, and that is that I don't want there to be any back and forth, okay? I want it to be like, here it is, here's the exercise, 15 minutes, Go and go ahead and do it, all right? Because um, uh, the idea with the exercises is that once again, you press play, you do it with me, and then 15 minutes you're done. So if that's all that your practice session is, then that's your practice session, okay? But don't worry, in that 15 minutes time, we're gonna go through those exercises several, several times, so that will be your practice, all right? And that will be absolutely fine if, if that's what you use for your practice, all right? If I open it up with Q&A, then people are gonna start to like, eh, you know, taper off. I mean, you know, people already, like, you know, even in this right now, as I'm doing more jibber-jabbering, you know, people start to taper off. I get it, uh, understandably so. I don't want that to happen on the exercises. So on those exercises, it's gonna be just 15, 20 minutes, something like that, and it's gonna be you working with me. We do it, we're done, okay, see you on Thursday. Um, I think Lydian dominant sound is overrated over dominant chords. Controversial, <laughs> you know. Sure. I mean, uh, uh, a Lydian, uh, Lydian dominant scale. We are going to talk about the Lydian dominant scale, but um, I think any scale to chord relationship is overrated, to be honest with you. I think uh, modes are overrated. I think so much has been made about modes and like, oh, if you just learn the mode, it's like, there's so much stuff that's, a circle of fifths is overrated. Like, you know, if you learn your circle of fifths, you'll be a great piano player. Uh, okay, show me how that works, because I, 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 I don't buy it, all right? It's a good tool, but it's like, uh, for all the fluff that, you know, so many online and offline uh, educators make about certain topics, um, yeah, sometimes I, I agree. I think that, that they're overrated as well. 
The goal, how I try to teach and the goal in this Confident Improviser program is to like really separate the wheat from the chaff, right? To like really separate it out uh, so that we can like not worry about all of that other minutia stuff and really get to the heart of what it is that makes you sound good at improvisation, right? So, uh, Kevin, for this initial schedule release of the lessons at one per week, do you have any concern that the pace of the first several lessons, or, pa uh, or, pa or perhaps more, will be too slow to hold the interest of your more advanced students? I'm not including myself in this category. Um, yeah, yeah, it might very well be. But <laughs> here's the thing, is that, First of all, if you're an advanced student, there's, uh, I forget how many hours, there's like something like 800 hours of lessons on the Jazz Edge site right now. So if you can't find something with 800 hours, then please go someplace else, like, like honestly. It's like, like then, then obviously, <laughs> you know, like, um, I, 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 don't, I don't have enough for you. There's so much stuff on the site that if you're an advanced student, you can find something to work on on the site. But let's stay within this Confident Improviser program. If you're an advanced student, well, first of all, like I said, I'm going to give you stuff for those more advanced students. Like we're going to talk transposition and stuff like that. So you're not just going to be like learning one exercise, but like, okay, let's do it in all 12 keys, all right? So, uh, and then some of those first beginner ones will be easy uh, for those advanced students. So then the advanced student, uh, to really be a good student in my mind, if they want to work through this improvisation stuff, what they'll do is they will go through and they will do it in all 12 keys, but then use their advanced sensibilities, right? So like if the lick was All right, well advanced student, here's your five notes, here's your bass line, you don't have to play that one lick, go ahead and create a different lick out of that, and then see if you can transpose in real time. So I just moved from C into F into G in real time. So now go ahead and do that. All right, if that's easy enough for you, now speed the darn thing up. Now try going in minor thirds. The point is that there is always something that you can do to bump up the intensity level, right? And that will actually be, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Kevin, because that will be a really good core lesson as well. Uh, like how I can like kind of talk about like, if you're an advanced student, how do you bump up the intensity level of these exercises? So thank you for that. I'll, I'm gonna write a note to myself to, uh, uh, to, to put that as one of the core lessons, all right? Uh, let's see, Bruce, my favorite quote, the only musician I need to be better than is the one I was yesterday. Yeah, that's a great quote, Bruce. Um, Zibinu uh, said, I love the fact that Jazz Edge brand is so focused and streamlined. Uh, it's one of the reasons I've stuck with it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, we're trying. We're trying. Uh, very excited about the course. Thanks for developing it. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, Bruce, I'm looking forward to a more focused approach. I tend to easily get distracted with new shiny objects. We all do. All right? We all do. All right? So this, this will definitely help. And let's see, uh, this looks like the last question here. Arturo, what is your opinion on doubling notes and chord voicings? Do you have precise rules for this or preferences? I hear a lot of generalist doubling of notes in gospel, jazz, and church. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with doubling uh, a note uh, in your chord voicing. A little off topic for right now, but, but I will answer this real quickly. So there's nothing wrong, like if I have like a C7 chord and I want to like throw my E there and my E there, you know, sure, I could do that. But now the only question I would uh, uh, tell you to, to really think about, now of course it's one thing we didn't talk about is like, well, I mean, what's the melody note, right? So if the melody note is E, all right, okay, that, that, that's fine. Like let's say the melody note was a D, well then why are you playing an E above it, right? That doesn't make any sense, so that you should be playing D instead, right? So obviously everything is melody dependent. But let's take this voicing here once again. The question I would ask to you is that, well, Sure, that's fine, you could do this, but why, right? Why put three E's in there? All right, well now maybe you keep the E down there, right? But over here, maybe you go to a D. Or maybe up here you go to a D, right? Uh, and then maybe over here, rather than playing an E, maybe you do 
do stuff like that. D and F sharp, nine and sharp 11, right? So when creating, you know, chord voicings and, and you know, playing jazz piano, uh, a lot of logic comes in, right? So like you, you want to ask yourself some logical questions. Why am I doing this? Does it make the most sense? Is there a better way of doing this? Is this the most streamlined? You know, like, like you want to constantly ask yourself those questions because that's how you learn to then be able to answer them yourself. So like, so when, when you come across something like this and you play that, you'll look down at your hands and be like, oh, what are you doing, Willie? Why, why, why are you playing three E's here? That, that, that's ridiculous. So like, you know, then, then I might change it into something like this, right? Now, there's still doubling B flats, right? But okay, it's just one doubling. Not so bad. I could do something like that, right? And then of course, the other uh, uh, thing to mention too is, depends on hand size. Can you even reach that? If you can't reach that, then maybe you gotta change things around a little bit, right? Change around your voicings. So uh, nothing wrong with doubling, just be asking yourself some of those logical questions of like, why are you doing so much doubling and is it really serving you well? And why not change the note and see, uh, play around with some other sounds. All right, so uh, thank you all very much. Um, uh, I know this was a long session, so thank you for hanging with me, for those of you that hung with me, um, and we're done. All right, so I will see you in the first lesson on October 23rd, and our first live follow-up will be October 29th. Um, and if you want to participate, if you're not already a Jazz Edge member, sign up at Jazz Edge. If you're a No Bowl member or a Piano with Willie member and you're interested in the chorus, uh, go ahead and write in. I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, bear in mind it is coming into the weekend, so if I don't get back to you, it might be Monday when I get back to you. All right? So anyway, that's it. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you hanging with me, and I will see you guys soon.